Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I am so happy that you're here today because I have a lot of fun things in store for you. Now to start off, I just wanted to say that I hope that you are healthy. I hope that you're safe and at home and hopefully social distancing away. Now I know this is a super weird time, but I know that we're gonna get through this. Just know that I'm praying for you. I'm praying for our world and we're gonna get through this. Now, I am very excited to show you something cute and fun that I made for my cousins. Now, I actually had plans to visit them in DC for Easter time and hopefully do some baking with them. Now, of course, that didn't work out, so I said, I'm gonna bake something delicious and I'm just gonna send it to them. Of course, I didn't just send them that. I decided to send them a whole bunch of other cute things. So if you'd like to see what that looks like, just wait to the end of the video so you can see that. So I made them these super cute cake in a jar trifles. Now what is super unique about these is that they're actually shelf stable. So the buttercream that I made for this actually has no butter at all, no milk, absolutely nothing that could possibly spoil. And the cake, we will actually be making this very inexpensive because we'll be using a cake mix. Now I'm sure you might be wondering, is that gonna taste homemade? Yes it is because we are gonna hack the heck out of this cake mix. So I hope you're ready for that. Um, I hope that you love this video. If you have any questions, don't forget to comment down below. If you do love it, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Stay to the end of the video if you would love to see my cousin's reaction. We are going to start off by making liners for the bottom of our cake pans using some parchment paper. I'm going to use my pan to trace one circle, then fold it three times for each of our cake layers. We'll be using a seven inch pan for our cake layers. Then you'll just cut your circles out and set them aside. Next, we are just going to grease and flour our pans with some unsalted butter and some all-purpose flour. Make sure that all the edges are well covered so that the cake pops right out once it's done baking and that you shake off all the excess flour. introducing my beloved bake even strips as you can tell i have used these a whole lot these strips are amazing because they help you bake an even and soft cake pretty much every time now if you don't have them you don't need them for this tutorial but i definitely recommend using them on all your future cakes they are truly worth every penny and you can use them over and over and over again i'm just going to fold them and place them in a glass of water and allow them to soak while i'm preparing the batter in a large bowl pour three large egg whites one cup of whole milk and one third cup of melted butter and combine the ingredients. Next, we're going to add one small box of Jello Instant Pudding Mix in the flavor vanilla and a teaspoon of vanilla extract and combine those as well. Now you'll add a box of white cake mix. My personal favorite is Duncan Hines Perfectly Moist Cake, but of course, any other one would work perfectly fine. Using a white cake mix with egg whites is super important so that we can start with a batter that is nice and white that will work perfect when we begin coloring our batter. Now by now, I'm sure you may have noticed that we have swapped and added a whole bunch of different ingredients to this cake mix, which is really going to give it that super homemade taste. Now we're going to separate our batter into three different bowls for our three different colors. I love using an ice cream scooper for this to make sure that each bowl has an even amount of batter. Once our batters are separated, it's time to give them some color. You'll need spoons for mixing, three food colorings of your choice, and some toothpicks. Since I was going for pastel springtime colors, I used some Wilton Icing gel colors in lemon yellow, pink, and teal. I really love these Wilton food colorings because a little bit goes a long way. Your basic grocery store liquid food coloring will also work for this. Just keep in mind not to pour too much of that dye into your batter because since it is liquid, it can water down your batter. 
Since we are going for light springtime colors, you won't need to add too much dye to your batter anyways. So make sure that when you're adding the dye, you just add gradually little by little. Continue to add food coloring and mix until you've reached the perfect color. Our batters are colored and ready to go and it's almost time to put them in the oven. Grab your bake even strips, wring them out to make sure they aren't dripping with water and place them tightly around the pan and pour your batter into the pan. Spread the batter into a nice, even, thin layer across the pan to make sure the entire pan is completely covered. Complete this step for each of your cake layers and then place them to bake at 325 degrees. Bake your cakes for about 30 minutes. Our cakes are out of the oven, I've let them cool and it's time to pop them right out of those pans. Shake the pan until you feel the cake is loose, place a plate over the pan Flip it over and the cake will come right out. I'll be wrapping my yellow and pink layers to keep them nice and moist while I bake the green layer. While our green cake layer is in the oven, we can get started on our buttercream by sifting our powdered sugar. In a large bowl, we'll sift one pound of powdered sugar. Sifting our sugar will make sure that our buttercream comes out nice and smooth and that there won't be any clumps of sugar in our frosting. In another large bowl, you'll need half a cup of butter flavored shortening, half a cup of vegetable shortening, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, and a teaspoon of Loran's butter emulsion. Then you'll mix that together until it's nice and smooth. Now since for this recipe we were going for a shelf stable buttercream, that is why we'll be using shortening instead of actual butter. Now to give it that extra butter taste, we are going to be adding that Loran's emulsion which will make all the difference. Now it's time to start adding our sifted sugar. You'll want to add this little by little so that it doesn't go flying when you begin to mix it. Now a butter emulsion is basically like a butter flavoring or a butter extract. Now I truly do love this one and you can purchase it on Amazon, but if you're not able to get this one, you can also just purchase any kind of butter extract that you would find at any grocery store. Now as you add your powdered sugar, you're going to notice that your buttercream is going to get a little tough and more difficult to mix. 
So we'll be adding a total of four tablespoons of water, which will really help thin out the frosting and allow you to mix it a little bit easier. I like to add the water gradually, kind of just checking the consistency in between each addition of water. Now, the more water you add, the thinner your frosting will be. So I find that four tablespoons is just the perfect consistency for what we'll be doing. Now we are going to add our second tablespoon of water. Add your third tablespoon of water. And add your final tablespoon of water. Mix for about eight minutes or until light and fluffy and set aside. Now it's time to cut the circles for our trifles. For this part, we'll be using a small bowl. We'll use a two and a half inch cookie cutter, which I purchased at Walmart. We'll be using the smooth side so we can get clean edges. And we'll use the parchment paper under the cake to hold our circles after we're finished cutting them out. Use the cookie cutter to cut seven circles out of each cake. The diameter of the cookie cutter that you use should match the diameter of the jar you'll be using. This will make sure that your circles fit snug in your jars. Place the excess of each cake into a small bowl and set it aside because we will be repurposing these. This is honestly my favorite part because we really get to see the color that you mixed earlier come to life. Now it's time to repurpose our leftover cake. Crumble each color of cake and we'll be using this as sprinkles to top on our beautiful trifles. And for the grand finale, grab a jar and a pink cake and push it down to the very bottom of the jar. Top your cake with a spoonful of frosting. You're gonna wanna press the frosting onto the edges making a nice even layer on top of the cake. Add your yellow cake and top that with another spoonful of frosting. Add your last cake and your last spoonful of frosting Give it a nice swirl on the top to give it a cute look. And top your cake with our crumbles and voila! And as a finishing touch, you can hot glue a cute ribbon and bow around the jar. Hey 
Hey everyone, so this is our final product. I put this super cute message, some bunny loves you. Credit to Pinterest for that idea. So I actually went ahead and wrapped the inside of the box with like a cute gold wrapping paper and wrapped the outside with a dotted wrapping paper that kind of matched the bows on the mason jars. And then um, I grabbed some extra stuff from Target. So these headbands were like $2. I made these bows right here. And then these are just some Easter eggs. So all together, it came out so cute. I am so excited excited to see the reaction and if you'd like to see it too just keep watching okay she was like paper paper oh, look. look thank you a thank big, you a big egg and an egg candy candy oh like did you girls read you the say? box did you read the box uh, love some some you bunny bunny loves you Oh. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, talk to this is how they <laughs> Yes! We, are, we get the best stuff ever. Hey guys, look at the cake. What cake? Look, keep going. Keep no, you guys pulled it out. Oh, you pulled it out. Yeah, look. Right there. There's the cake. They made them for you. Look at the cake. <laughs> she's, like, she's like going right in there. I think maybe you get a spoon. Yeah. 